Tomo News presents Clean Energy Solutions. Australian firm builds underwater buoys to tap ocean swell energy. An Australian company has been working on a system that uses underwater buoys to convert sea waves into zero emission energy and desalinated water. Australian firm Carnegie Wave Energy has been developing a system called CETO, which aims to utilize sea waves to generate power. Steel-made buoys that can currently generate 240 kilowatts are the main part of the system. At the test site at the Australian naval base, HMAS Stirling, three buoys were placed 11 kilometers apart. The buoys are less susceptible to extreme weather damage, while underwater waves are sufficient to generate power. The buoys' pumps drive the high-pressure water to an onshore power plant via a subsea pipe. The high-pressure water spins the turbines, which then generates zero-carbon electricity. The CETO system can be used to power a desalinization plant as well. High-pressure water can be used to remove salt from seawater through reverse osmosis. The Australian company believes that the cost of the electricity generated by the CETO system will be competitive with diesel if it is deployed at a large scale. Rain or shine, future solar panels may be able to generate power. Scientists in China are producing solar panels that can produce energy from the last source you'd expect when we're talking about solar energy, rainwater. In a typical solar panel, photons from a light source knock electrons free from atoms within the panel, and the action generates a flow of electricity. Although solar power technology has been getting increasingly efficient, there is still the tiny problem that solar cells can't produce any power when it's raining. Researchers are introducing a new type of solar panel by adding a layer of graphene or carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb structure to dye-sensitized solar cells. A flexible layer of indium-10 oxide and plastic is included underneath. Graphene has unusual properties that allow electrons to move freely throughout the entire layer. Rainwater contains positively charged ions like ammonium, calcium, and sodium. When water binds to the panel surface, a double layer of positive ions and negatively charged electrons is created, which ends up producing a voltage and current. Tests of the new solar panels have been able to produce hundreds of microvolts, which is small even compared to a standard AA battery. So there's a long way to go before the new solar panels become more widely used, but more efficient future versions could mean big things for the solar industry. Japanese engineer develops turbine that loves typhoons. A new type of wind mechanism being developed in Japan is designed to not only harness power from the wind, but also to be particularly effective during typhoons. A typhoon turbine created by a Japanese engineer consists of three vertical blades and a central rod. It has an omnidirectional access so that it can respond to wind coming from every direction. The turbine makes use of the principle of the Magnus effect. Air curves when passing by a rotating object, and the downward deflection of the airflow produces a lifting force that counteracts the force of gravity, enabling the object to remain airborne. The blades are controlled by the central rod, which can be tightened to slow down or stop the blades completely, regardless of the external forces. Under normal circumstances, the Typhoon Turbine can achieve about 30% efficiency, while a conventional wind turbine can achieve 40%. However, conventional wind turbines can be damaged by typhoons, while the Typhoon Turbine would still function normally in a large storm. The designer of the Typhoon Turbine believes a single typhoon would be able to generate enough energy to power Japan for 50 years. According to the Japan Guide, about seven or eight typhoons pass over Okinawa Prefecture each year, with about three hitting its main islands. If the typhoon turbine is proven to be functional under extreme weather, then Japan could harvest a significant amount of energy to power itself for a long time. This solar panel runs on bacteria power. Researchers at Binghamton University have come up with an interesting way to harness energy using a resource we have far too much of. Bacteria. To harness power from bacteria, scientists arrange nine biosolar cells in a 3x3 pattern to form a scalable and stackable panel. The cells use cyanobacteria, which can be found in aquatic and terrestrial habitats, as a source of clean and sustainable energy. In the daytime, oxygen and electrons are released through photosynthetic reactions. 
At night, electrons are produced from the bacteria's respiratory activities. 5.59 microwatts were generated in 12-hour day-to-night cycles over a total of 60 hours. Solar panels produce about 200 watts in a 6x10 configuration. The biosolar cells in the same pattern will only generate 3.726 one hundred thousandth watts. Though not the most efficient, the technology has the potential to be a more reliable energy source. Once the panel is functional, it could power small wireless systems in remote areas where frequent battery changes are impractical. The Binghamton team's work has been published in the journal Sensors and Actuators B Chemical. Bionic Leaf turns solar energy into liquid fuel. US scientists have developed a bionic leaf that can convert solar energy into liquid fuel. Scientists used a bionic leaf that mimics the chemical processes in photosynthesis to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. A bacteria called Ralstonia eutropha then converts the hydrogen gas into protons and electrons. They are then integrated into carbon dioxide molecules as part of the reproductive cycle of the bacteria to form the liquid fuel isopropanol. Although isopropanol is a combustible liquid fuel, it is currently mostly used as a household disinfectant and as an industrial drying agent to remove water from fuels. Quantum dot coating can turn windows into solar panels. Researchers at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico have developed a film of quantum dots that can turn windows into photovoltaic systems. When sunlight hits conventional silicon solar panels, electrons break free of the top layer of semiconducting material. The electrons then follow conductors between the positive and negative sides of the panel to generate an electrical current. Quantum dots, which have an inner core, an outer shell, and a silica coat, can be used as semiconductors. Quantum dots can be spread into thin sheets that are placed onto glass window panes. When photons from sunlight hit a quantum dot, it excites the electron in the valence band and sends it into the conduction band, leaving a hole behind. When the electron recombines with the hole in the valence band, a new photon with lower energy is generated. This new photon then propagates within the glass via internal reflections. Energy is generated when the propagating photons reach the window's frame where solar cells are stored. Coatings of quantum dots can be used on any window to turn them into harvesters of sunlight at lower cost than is currently available. Los Alamos-based startup Ubiquitous Quantum Dots has received a $225,000 grant from the National Science Foundation to commercialize this technology as a coating on windows. Netherlands set to spend 150 million euros on biogas production. The Netherlands has found a use for their cows other than pumping milk, turning their manure into energy. Manure processing is important to the Netherlands, as about 10% of the country's greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, mostly methane from animal manure. The International Dairy Federation says the nation's livestock produces about 74 million tons of manure a year, which is too much to be directly applied to farmland as fertilizer. The excessive amount of nutrients could leak into underground water, resulting in algae growth and pollution to nearby water sources. To solve this problem, officials have implemented an experiment at one farm. Cow manure is put through an anaerobic digester, where exposure to bacteria transforms solid manure into liquid form. The resulting substance then releases biogas that is made mostly of methane and carbon dioxide. The biogas can be used as fuel, while any leftover manure can be used as fertilizer. This experiment reportedly generated 9,342 kilowatt-hours of electricity in 20 days, which is enough to power three homes for a year. The Dutch government has committed to investing 150 million euros to the biogas program, which aims to get a thousand large farms across the country to produce energy from cow manure within four years. France planning to pave roads with solar panels. The French government is set to go ahead with energy plans to pave 1,000 kilometers of its country's roads with solar panels. France's energy minister, Ségolène Royal, made the announcement last month, saying she expects tests to begin as soon as this spring. The panels are made by Cola, a subsidiary of French industrial giant Bouygues, and took five years to develop. 
The 7mm thick Wattway solar panels contain photovoltaic cells, which collect solar energy through a thin layer of polycrystalline silicon. The panels will be glued to existing road surfaces and can withstand the passage of heavy goods vehicles. The manufacturers say road surfaces are occupied by vehicles only around 10% of the time, so the panels will get plenty of exposure to the sun. The panels can provide electricity for street lights, street furniture, road signs, and buildings. The manufacturers say 4 meters of solarized road can power one household, and one kilometer can produce enough electricity for a town of 5,000 people. If it reaches its maximum potential, the plan could provide electricity for 5 million people, or about 8% of France's population. The cost of the project is unknown, but the French government has suggested it could pay for it by raising taxes on petrol. Last year, the world's first road to convert sunlight into electricity opened on a 100-meter stretch of carriageway in the Netherlands. Toyota showcased its hydrogen fuel cell vehicle called the Mirai at the 2016 San Francisco Auto Show last November. According to Toyota product specialist Chris Petzler, Once we extract hydrogen out of things, it's a limitless source of fuel. Uh, we don't burn it, so it's completely clean. Petzler says Toyota sees this as the fuel of the future, but how does it actually work? You fill uh, the tanks with compressed hydrogen gas, pure hydrogen. Whenever you step on the accelerator, it feeds hydrogen into the fuel cell which then mixes with oxygen, which we just get from the ambient air. We have two scoops on the front end of the car and a compressor that pushes oxygen in. The hydrogen and the oxygen want to bind, but we force them through a micron thin layer of platinum. So the electron can't make that binding process. So it kind of goes around. We capture that as electricity. And then the hydrogen and the oxygen bind on the other side, which H2O, all we're left with is water vapor. So that's the byproduct. And then the electricity, of course, runs the car. Although driving a car that emits water vapor could be a bonus, there are still a few hurdles ahead. Getting the infrastructure into place, getting more pumps, that is our challenge. According to the U.S. Department of Energy's website, there are only 14 public hydrogen fueling stations in the United States, and 11 of them are in California. Petzler says Toyota is working towards a solution. We're releasing our patents on the car and fuel cell stations. So we have a company called First Element that's helping us in California, Air Liquide in France. The Mirai accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 9 seconds, and it takes around 5 minutes to refuel. Unique wind system may be key to bringing electricity to developing areas. A Minnesota wind turbine company has signed a licensing agreement that will see its energy technology be used in the Netherlands. Shear Wind has a patented system of harvesting wind power that can produce six times more green energy than traditional systems called Invelox for increased velocity. The final shaped Invelox system captures wind from all directions, even with speeds as low as two miles per hour. The wind is then funneled through a duct where it picks up speed. The accelerated wind is delivered to the generators on the ground level, where its kinetic energy is harnessed to produce electricity. Any residual wind will be returned to the environment. Unlike conventional turbines, Invelox keeps its generators on the ground rather than on top. This allows it to produce 600% more power. With its capabilities, the powerful device can be used not just commercially, but also in developing nations and in areas where electricity is not readily accessible. Cameroon turns human waste into clean power. Two towns in Cameroon are installing biogas systems to turn human waste into sustainable energy that can provide fuel and electricity for local communities. Organic material such as animal waste is placed inside an airtight tank where bacteria and archaea break down the material. This releases biogas, which is a byproduct that is a mixture of mostly methane with some carbon dioxide. The biogas can be stored and burned as a fuel for cooking and to power electricity generators, while the rest of the waste can be used as fertilizer. The biogas system installed in Cameroon connects a septic tank to biodigesters linked to individual households. Human waste placed in the septic tank is converted into biogas by the biodigesters, and this releases energy into people's homes. More than 3,000 households and local schools in two towns have reportedly installed the biogas system. It is estimated that the project may reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the vicinity by up to 60%. The project was initiated by Bioenergy Cameroon, a non-governmental youth organization. 
The group trains local students, especially female students, on how innovative technology like solar power and biogas work. Scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility in California have announced a breakthrough in the development of nuclear fusion, promising an inexhaustible supply of energy. The fusion process uses a fuel capsule placed inside a tiny gold case called a Holralm, which is bombarded by 192 laser beams. The temperature inside the Holralm is lowered to more than 400 degrees below zero Fahrenheit to facilitate the fusion reaction. The fuel capsule contained two hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium. After laser beams were released, the gold wall of the Holralm converts them into X-rays. At high temperatures, the nuclei of the deuterium and tritium are fused together and alpha particles are produced, generating energy. The milestone that the scientists achieved is known as ignition, where the energy produced was greater than the amount of energy put in. UK scientists have developed a high-altitude power-generating drone aircraft that can harvest energy from multiple sources. Each 20 by 20 meter power-generating drone has four propellers, multiple wind turbines and a flat base covered in solar panels. The drones will fly at altitudes of up to 50,000 feet to avoid air traffic and clouds that obscure the sun. Each drone can produce up to 50 kilowatts of power by harnessing both solar and wind energy. The drones then use microwaves to beam the energy to antenna stations on the ground. The inventors say that the mobile aerial power plant could serve as a source of energy in times of crisis. The drone's creators say it can be fitted with more efficient generators as they become available. Wankband gives you the ability to charge your gadgets by, um, wanking. Rapidly deteriorating battery life has been a problem we've all become well acquainted with ever since the introduction of smartphones. But with last week's announcement of the Wank Band, a new wearable charger, adult video website Pornhub say they've discovered an environmentally friendly solution to this frustrating issue. The wrist strap device generates and stores electricity, which can be used to charge your battery starved gadgets with each up and down thrust performed while wearing it. So the next time your smartphone's battery is running low, arranging a date with rosy palms will fix it right up. Best hold off on whipping up your next batch though, as the device is still under development. But if you'd like to be among the world's first to quite literally pump for power, Pornhub's Safe for Work landing page gives you the chance to sign up for beta testing. Now there's no way this thing is real, but we've got to ask nonetheless. The next time your iPhone's running low on juice, do you see yourself, um, juicing yourself? Let us know in the comments below.